those petty rules and regulations, it's enough to make you cry. They're full of woes, no pink flamingos, someone tell us why. Slick managers and lawyers slither close, but they won't tell. Why our dream home should remind us we bought a one-way ticket to hell. Hey, hey, what's going on, guys? This is Dana, a.k.a. Matt Caster. My friends call me Pod. For some reason, people just don't seem to understand that. But that's all right. Hey, guys, this particular video is going to be dealing with audacity, believe it or not. Uh, for those of you that listen to my other videos, uh, your jaw, go ahead and pick it up off the floor now. And th there's two reasons that I'm doing this. Number one, I'm just getting a ton of email, and so, so I'm going to go ahead and do a few videos with Audacity. Uh, you guys know I am a Reaper fan, but uh, so I was up here on the internet searching uh, for ACX, so you know, just doing some general reading, and I ran across this woman named Crystal Washer. Okay, now guys, this is an attorney that left the corporate world that teaches. ACX. Okay. First thing I did was I signed up for her course. Now, her course, uh, you can click here and you just come up, you enroll in the course for free. Okay. She's awesome. She knows the ACX like she knows the back of her hand. Okay. She's got some awesome information up there. She led me to these guys, Libervox. Now, what these guys do is they take books that are in the public domain and they turn them into audio. So if you want to practice your narration at the same time as giving back to the world or to the people, you know, that have a hard time reading or maybe uh, for the blind or somebody, you know, elderly or cataracts where their eyesight, uh, where they just can't read anymore. This is where you want to go. Okay. And as you can see here, I just joined them yesterday. And this is another reason why I'm making this video. Because, you know, with podcasting guys, we deal with LOFS, loudness unit full scale. With the ACX, uh, we deal with RMS, which is root mean squared. You know, these are all audio measuring formulas. They're mathematical formulas. Now, these guys use a different system. I've never heard about it. I took a little time, uh, read some research, uh, kind of figured it out, and uh, their parameters are between the 87 and the 91 dBs, okay? And, and that's what just freaked me out, because when, you know, being in the audio world, uh, when I say 91 dBs, that's loud, okay? But it's not what you think, <laughs> all right? So, there's... Folks on here, you know, we all use different software. Now, if you use Adobe Edition, you need to come see this guy right here. Okay? Uh, Leanna, this is, this is kind of for you. And uh, I've known Mike probably maybe a little over two years. Uh, we've never spoke. Uh, we just kind of sometimes in the same circle. And I just send people his way when I know that they deal with uh, Adobe. Uh, I don't mess with it that much. And uh, this guy knows everything about everything when it deals with it, okay? So anytime you see Audition, Adobe, you know, he's got 42 videos. He'll walk you through the process of your software. He's got uh, quick tips for podcasting, okay? And remember, guys, speech is speech. Now, we're not talking about vocals and singing and things of that nature. But when, it, when you're dealing with speech, What's good for podcasting or input levels or things of this nature, you literally just transitions right over into narration. Okay? So come up here and check Mike out. And like I said, if you have any questions, uh, just go up there and Google Mike Murphy CO on YouTube. You'll come straight to his channel. Okay? So at this point, let's go ahead and jump on down. Or I want to I want to say one more thing uh, over here about her free uh, audiobook, her course. 
This woman has so much energy. It's addictive. Okay. If she had a free online course on how to build bridges, I promise you, it'll make you want to go out and build the bridge. Okay. She's, she's that good. All right. So again, I highly recommend you come up there and you see her. Uh, of course, uh, she's got so much going on. And like I said, guys, she's an attorney that walked away from the corporate world to do what she truly loves to do. And you can come up here and you can read her story. Okay. At this point, let's go ahead and jump down into Reaper. And from Reaper, we're going to get over to Audacity. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay. Now, Marco's file is uh, a little bit longer. It's about 17 or, uh, yeah, but well, about 16, 17 minutes. And this is for an audio book with the ACX. Okay. So, uh, same thing. We're going to go ahead and open him up in Audacity. And this way you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Now, same thing. If I just uh, split his file and we go up there and we do our ACX check. Uh, passed. The noise floor passes. Uh, Marco records in his closet, guys, just so you know. This is where he does his recording, inside of a closet. He's got a wonderful voice. Okay? So here again, we know this does not meet it. It tells us it does not meet it. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we're going to just select the whole file, then click off of it. Now, we're going to go up here now. We're going to apply the same chain for the ACX. And this is where you'll be able to see what it's doing. Now, the first thing it's doing is applying a gate. Uh, I use the GA gate. I don't like the gate that comes with Audacity. So it's gated at a negative 40 dBs. Now it's applying a high pass filter set at 80 hertz. Now it is uh, normalizing to a negative uh, 20. And now it's applying the limiter at a negative 3.5. And now it's applying the DC offset remover. Okay. So now, since we've got the whole thing highlighted, Let's check it now to see if it passes the ACX. And it's going to take it just a second. Passed, passed, passed. Guys, I can sit here and do this all day long. Remember, these files have not been edited. These are raw files. But this is the thing. If you're going to record into Audacity, into Reaper, into Adobe Edition. It just doesn't matter what it is, guys. If you're using a AI or audio interface, you need to be between this negative 12 and negative 18 for your input level. Okay? That's what kind of makes all this stuff work. It's absolutely the cleanest noise-to-signal ratio that you can achieve with digital music or digital audio, I should say. Okay? So, now let's go ahead and undo this. And now it's back in its original state. And now let's come down here and let's apply the LibriVox. And watch what it's doing. I'm using the same gate. Okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do. You need to get rid of the background noise. Now it's applying the high pass filter as well. Now it's normalizing, but this normalizing is a little bit different. And I'm putting the DC offset. And now it's going to apply a limiter. Okay. And like I said, guys, I haven't been used to this type of system. And that's why I went in there and added the amplifier. Because after you get through with this, then you have to amplify it. Okay. Now, this is the chain. It's the compressor first. I'm sorry, the, uh, the, uh, the gate. It's the gate first. Then it's the high pass filter set at 80 hertz. The roll off is a negative 48 dBs. Now the RMS normalize is independent target of 19.5. The DC offset remover, it's just factory default. There is nothing you set on it. The limiter is set, and I'm just going to show you how you do this. Just double click on it, come to edit parameters. And there we are set at a negative 3.5. The hold is 10 milliseconds. 
We do not want to apply any makeup gain, and we simply hit OK, and then OK again. Now, Amplify, this is the one that was throwing me, guys, because I could not get two files to match up doing the same thing, and I'm going to show you here in a second how we check that. So when you click on this, same thing, Edit Parameters, you want this at a negative 2. It, you, you have to allow clipping, but it, I promise you it won't because it's already at a negative two. And then you simply click OK and OK again and OK again. So at this point, we would come over here and we would uh, export the audio. It's an MP3 constant on your bitrate mode, 128. Now, for the ACX, you would change this to 192. That's their requirement. OK, but for LibriVox, it's 128. Doesn't matter whether you have Storio down here. You don't have to check uh, forced uh, export to mono. It's a mono file. It's going to make it mono. We're going to click Save. It's going to tell me the file's already there. I know it's already there. I'm going to say, yes, replace it. Now, this is where you would put in your metadata. And I can see what software he's using to create this, uh, the year and everything that it did. But now with LibriVox, and, and you would have to check up on this, guys, I'm pretty sure that the only thing they want you to put in here is under comments, you can put, you know, narrated or read by uh, Matt Caster, you know, whatever name that you're using. Leave everything else blank and then hit OK. And now it's going to export this file. And when it does, we're going to use another program to see if we've met their requirements of being between a 87 and a 91 dB range. So now that that's done, we're going to bring up this program. It's called MP3 Gain. Now we're going to add the file, which is what we just exported, and then we're going to click Track Analysis. That's our target range we're looking for right there, is the 89.0 dB. We're at a 89. Nine. Remember now, our range is a 87 to a 91. And they prefer to be as close to 89 as you can get. So we have just met the parameters for LibriVox. Okay? Okay, guys, so here I am now in Audacity. Okay, and I wanted to show you this. See, I'm, I've got my microphone set. Now I'm on the first floor of a three story condo approximately maybe 15 to 20 feet away from the street to the side of me. I'm in a direct flight path of Dulles International Airport, sitting about 12 miles south of Washington, D.C. That's why I use a dynamic mic, okay? And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this so I can fill up some audio space, okay? So as I'm doing this, I'm going to go ahead and click record. I'm going to give myself at least two seconds, okay, of uh, for the head of the file, which is what they refer to as room tone, and then I'm just going to start using some sayings that use plosives, okay? The way you check for plosives is you put your hand in front of your face, about an inch away, and say the alphabet. Now, some of the most common ones, they call them P-pops, and that's why a lot of people will have you read things with P's in them, like Peter Piper. Pick the peck of pickled peppers. How many peppers did Peter Piper pick? Now, I do not use a pop filter, okay? I don't need one. I simply go through, and I have my microphone set probably uh, two to three inches away from my face, about a 15 degree off axis, pointed down about a half an inch below my chin, okay? And it's just the way that I've always done it. Uh, if you're just starting out, I highly suggest that you get a pop filter. They're very cheap. And actually, you can make one out of a coat hanger and a pair of pantyhose. All right. Also, a heavy wool sock works real good. It's the same thing as what they call the windscreen if you're outside and you're doing uh, digital recording. Okay. So I think I've got enough audio now. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Now, let's go back to the very beginning. And I'm going to do the same thing, guys, just real quick. 
I'm going to analyze it first to see if I meet the ACX check, which I know it's not going to. Okay, but look at the noise floor. Okay, and my peak level. Now I automatically know, guys, okay, and it's the mathematics. In order for me to get to this negative 23, okay, I'm going to have to increase uh, the volume probably by about, well, it's mathematics. It's, it's 29.8 minus 23. But I like to stay around that negative 20. That puts me dead center for the ACX. And then I would subtract that and see where my peak level is going to be. And I know that all of this is going to work out. Okay? So I know it doesn't pass. So I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to apply the ACX chain first. It's going to go real quick. Okay. Now at this point I would come up here. And I would actually cut. Uh, one second off. Uh, here. But, but I'm just going to leave it there, but you know, just because uh, I'm not submitting it to the ACX. So let's check it again. Passed, passed, passed. Okay? Just that simple. So we'll hit OK. Now we're going to undo this. Go back to the original state. Now I'm going to come up and edit this chain. Before when I told you that the uh, DC offset remover see how i've got it up here now and this is what you do i'm simply going to come down here now and i'm going to click move down i want that to be the last thing in this chain okay so that's how you do that all right so that's how that gets corrected so now i'm going to come up here and i'm going to apply that same chain it's going to go through its process you can see the waveform changing right before your eyes, okay? So now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to export it. I'm going to just put it right back here in this folder. We're at 128. I'm just going to call it Mac. Okay. We're going to save it. We'll hit OK. It's going to do its thing. Okay, so now we've got uh, our MP3 game program open again. We're going to add the file. There it is. And we're going to check uh, track analysis. And we're at the 89.7. Okay, now this is two different pieces of audio. So I'm pretty confident if you follow this chain, it will get you to where you need to be for Livervox. Okay, and that's it, guys. Take care, God bless, and we are out of here.